am I audible? Welcome to the Book Talk presented by the Book Wishes Club. Opening a book is like diving into the journey of wisdom, emotions and a lot of hidden treasures of the world. Welcome everyone. This is the Book Talk from the Book Wishes Club and it's me Saleska Sharma. Today we are going to have exciting talk about a very interesting book The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R Covey from our founder Mr Lokesh Rohilla. So let's welcome you. Welcome sir. Thank you so much Saleska. Thank so, you for inviting to the book talk. We are very grateful to have you. So uh firstly how would you like to introduce yourself to the audience So I am Lokesh Rohila and I am the founder of Book Wishes Club and today we are doing this book talk because we are here for a very strong reason the books have changed the books have got a very huge change in my life and we would like to identify we would like to discuss about how this can bring changes into our life as well and that is what this our Book Wishes Club is all about when we say the name the book wishes club it says the books can fulfill your wishes so we are trying to promote the impact of books into your lives how can one improve the quality of their lives through the books through the wisdom that is stored in so much of books that are there avail- available in this world so that's let's begin about this thing yes thank you sir Um so firstly I would like to ask that uh, what meaning does the book have in your life any kind of book I think books are the foundation of our life and whatever happens in our life is for a reason and books can actually give more meaning to your life mm-hmm. books contain so much of wisdom so much of knowledge like you cannot acquire this much of knowledge by your own experience in your life so if you read books if you apply them in your life you can actually fast forward your progress to success i would mm-hmm. say at least by 20 times if not less it's it's amazing to find out what a book can have like what kind of impact a book can have in your life i never thought in my whole career that reading books or applying mm-hmm. those books could be so important in life but when i did get connected to this book my whole life changed and the the way i used to look at people the way i used to look at the problems the way i used to look at life the way i used to connect with people everything has changed completely it has completely shifted my perspective it has completely shifted the way i do the things and obviously the results are also there it has been quite some time now since i got connected to the books and it is amazing experience i mean you cannot describe this in words this is this is what a book has done into my life That's lovely to hear from you and uh, I would also like to get an opinion from you about like we know there are people of different nature not everybody loves to read book so do you think that those people who are not actually book readers are they missing something from their life I think they are missing something from their lives but it's not just about reading the books like see human beings we at the end of the day we all are human beings mm-hmm. and we all learn in different ways scientifically if you say that there are three major ways in which the human beings learn either we learn by watching things or we learn by listening to things mm-hmm. or we learn by doing things so if i have a problem in reading books i can't understand books i can always enhance my learning through watching others through listening from others mm-hmm. i can do certain things it's all about learning reading books is basically about programming yourself mm-hmm. making a new version of yourself by putting new information in your mind however if you're not able to do it through books that's nothing to be like worried about because we all learn in different ways so there is no superior or no, no inferior mm-hmm. i would say in this case so yes obviously this interaction will also help those people to know about what's inside this book because uh, they can extract the knowledge without reading it i want to ask you that uh, what is the most favorite uh, part or chapter uh, in this book according to you I wouldn't say that there is any particular chapter that is like amazing or something but I would definitely say the first part the first uh, section of the book which is known as the inside out which completely changes your perspective it's about the way you think the book says that the way we look at the problem is the problem so mm-hmm. when we are approaching any part of our life that itself is the problem our approach itself is the problem 
what we do is that we only think from the fixed perspective that we have but there are always multiple angles to look at a situation and we only focus on one and then we enter into problems and then obviously we know that the results of our lives are there so if we can simply hold ourselves for a while and look at the situation not by yourself maybe from somebody else's perspective if you can't do it yourself you can always ask a third person to give you opinion from their perspective i'm 100% sure that if you can simply think about this it will give 100% results like that there will be a lot of change in the results and then you will be happy that why i didn't do this earlier this is uh, this is something i really liked about this book mm-hmm. that it completely shifts your perspective and like asks you to look at the problem from a different angle which is not you so it's basically about thinking out of the box and doing not exactly it. out of the box i would say it's just like looking at things from a different angle all right is you don't have to like be extraordinary to achieve extraordinary things it's just like you have to be focused and you just need to look at the problem the way it should be not the way you are Mm-hmm. normally what we do we look at the problem the way we are because we since our childhood we have been programmed in a mm-hmm. certain way and our way of thinking our way of looking at things our way of interacting with people has been like kind of uh, like you know monotonous or you can say that it's a kind of pattern is there so mm-hmm. whenever we look at any kind of situation in life it always is the similar things it's always coming somewhere from our past mm-hmm. so what it says is that don't look at the problem as you are look at the way problem look at the way i mean look at the problem the way it is the mm-hmm. problem it is so you will always be able to see it in a different way and obviously when you can see it differently you will act differently and when you once you act differently obviously it's going to be different results so has it like really worked in your life practically have you started applying it or how did it change your perspective of solving the problems so i have been always a problem solver since my childhood but even i used to have a lot of problems because mm-hmm. you know obviously as i said that we are programmed in a certain way so certain patterns will keep on repeating in your life mm-hmm. after looking at this book after after like reading this book one thing i understood is that if the patterns are repeating in my life that means i need to change the angle i look at the problem if i approach mm-hmm. the problem in a certain way and it's not fixing and it's coming back coming back it's like it always happens like mm-hmm. the things will keep on repeating in your life so that gives me an alarm that no now we need to look at this thing from a different perspective and that mm-hmm. is the time i look for suggestions i look for people who can help me with that maybe i look for authors i can ask i mean you sh- you should always be asking for help mm-hmm. it's not you cannot be right all the time you have to consider your you have to understand this thing that you cannot do everything correctly mm-hmm. and once you are able to understand this simple thing that will completely enhance your the way you live and that's quite relatable to something that i uh, that i just got an insight of i have heard it somewhere that uh, when we start uh, looking at problem uh, towards solving it as if it is the problem of somebody else and not ours then we uh, tend to solve it more uh, productively or more in the right way than we do it ourselves do you agree with this yeah i would agree to that because uh, as i said that i can look at your problems from a different angle which you can't mm-hmm. and you can lo- look at mine so that is why we say that uh, see human beings are social animals we all need to collaborate with people we cannot do everything alone mm-hmm. if we could do everything alone then this this world would be a very lonely place human beings biologically have been designed in certain way and we are supposed to be interacting with people we are supposed to be talking to people we are supposed to be collaborating with people and that is the best way to live life this is what i have found that's amazing <laughs> suggestions i would say so um just hypothetically if uh, you were to add an eighth habit in this book what do you think that would be i think the author actually has added a eighth habit there is a book called the eighth habit okay. which is from good to greatness so this book teaches you how to become good at as, as a person and then once you have become good obviously there is a second level there is always a next level to it you can always improve there is something called continuous improvement mm-hmm. you should be thinking of always moving to the next level once you arrived at a certain point then you should be thinking that what next what 
a common mistake that people do is that they arrive at a certain point and they don't have any kind of view or they they have limited knowledge mm -hmm. then then they're not able to see what is what lies further and that is where their growth stops mm -hmm. but if you can enhance your horizon you can enhance your perspective by reading or by learning continuous mm -hmm. learning you can always you will always be able to see what lies ahead of that and then one day you will be able to reach to that next level which you may have never thought that i would reach there because you know it's all about the persistence it's all about you you keep on walking ahead walking ahead and then f 5 years down the line 10 years down the line you actually realize that you have reached so far which you had never even imagined and that only happened one at once at a time one mm -hmm. step at a time so this is a very good habit consistency persistence is a very good habit mm -hmm. and always trying to move to the next level this will lead to lead you to greatness so as we talk about greatness uh, can we say it uh, like a state of self actualization that state of greatness you can say it could be a state of actualization like uh, you can reach to the fullest potential mm -hmm. you can live up to the i mean you can live up to your abilities obviously uh, we are humans but we can always become superhumans it's super being a superhuman it's not about like being magical or like being like flying in the sky or something it's just like you are able to fulfill the responsibilities you are able to live to your potential every human life has more than one reality and once we achieve that greatness we are able to not only help ourselves in our life we are also able to help others and create a difference in the community see at the end of the day it's our responsibility to make sure that we make an impact into our life and as a community member we should be able to make impact into the life of everyone so i think that greatness can be defined if you as a person have contributed to everyone's life then you can be considered as a great person so as we talk about this uh, topic of greatness i am very sure that everybody wants to reach to that height that level in their life but uh, what are the steps that need to that they need to you know go through or there must be some stairs that they need to climb to reach to that level so what do you think uh, it does this book define or explain about those things yes uh, the seventh habit in this book it's about sharpening the saw it's about approaching life approaching your daily life with a renewed uh, sharpness mm -hmm. it's about you sharpen yourself every day like you can't cut a piece of wood with a uh, with a dull saw so the seventh habit says that you have to keep on sharpening yourself so every day would be a better day for you and then if you are able to focus on all the four dimensions which are mentioned in this book mm -hmm. so the book talks about four dimensions it's about the mind body heart and soul if you can focus on all of these aspects then you can reach to that point in your life then you will you will feel that i mean why i didn't do this before and then like you are able to realize your potential see first the first step to actually is to realize who you really are because most of the people they are just going by the patterns already set in their minds and they don't even know that why am i doing the same things again and again they have no idea about it that is the that is the paradigm or that is the way of thinking they have developed over the period of time since their childhood but when you focus on yourself on a daily basis when you take out time for yourself on a daily basis to sharpen yourself to make yourself better every day so you first realize that okay this is my real abilities because you keep on improving keep on improving humans are like that when we keep on repeating a certain act we always get better at that be good better best and then it leads to greatness so that is the path you keep on working on yourself and it will change your mindset it will improve your body language it will improve the way you connect with people and then one day you will see that you will start attracting the most beautiful things in your life you will not be attracting problems anymore you will be attracting prosperity you will be attracting uh, a love you will be attracting affection you will be attracting wealth and then you will see that uh, one day you will be able to re you will be able to say that oh i have become successful in your own way see success is like the different people define it in a different way what i would say is that if you can truly utilize your potential and you can contribute in everyone's life and you can make a difference you are successful it doesn't matter whether you have a billion dollars in your account or whether you have a few few hundreds of thousands or all it doesn't matter but if you are really able to create that impact and help everyone help yourself reach to your full potential i would call you a successful person so as we talk about the thing that habit of working on ourselves every day and we know as human beings we lose consistency very easily 
we are not so persistent with uh, whatever we do when once we start uh, a plan we follow it till some days and then after that the fourth or fifth day we just end up doing nothing so uh, how did this book help you or how did your own realization help you to continue that persistency of working on yourself so i would like to connect this question to the habit number 2 which says begin with end in mind so it says that you should know what where do you want to reach after certain period of time let's say 15 years 20 years or let us say maybe the end of your life what would you like to be called upon mm -hmm. would you like people to talk good things about you after you die would you like people to say that oh thank god he has left the mm -hmm. place so once you realize that thing that that uh i have a certain purpose i have to reach to a certain point after this many years and then obviously you have to break down that into daily action daily action so once you have that vision in your mind that okay this is the place i want to reach after 20 years like you you define your purpose you have a vision that actually pulls you out of the bed every day and then you will be able to work on yourself because once you have a vision once you have a purpose then it comes automatically the motivation comes from within that oh i have to reach at a certain point and i know that if i don't sharpen myself if i don't improve myself on a daily basis i won't be able to reach there so that has been the biggest motivation that uh, once you start having a vision what's you once you decide that this is what i exactly want to do in my life then it pulls you out of the bed it it really it really triggers that response in you and then you won't be able to stop yourself also so there should be some pull factor for every individual to just get them out of the yes, bed yes 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 we need to have that pull factor uh, either it comes from within you or somebody else to pull that out of mm -hmm. you uh, but as human beings see what happens with our mind is that our conscious mind is designed to be lazy mm -hmm. naturally so when certain things keep on repeating in our life and our conscious mind goes to sleep mm -hmm. like when you when you are not using computer for a long period of time it goes to sleep right this is similar with our mind also when we keep on using uh, when we keep on doing the same task over and over again so consciousness has to go to sleep then only subconscious patterns uh, will help you do the job and that is where that is where the comfort zone wala trap is there yeah that people fall into the trap of comfort zone because they fail to <clears throat> understand that i have to under, i have to be at the conscious level all the time if you can consciously think about things if you can consciously look at things that okay i'm getting comfortable i need to pull i pull myself out that will take you to places because if you are just simply following the patterns over and over again then obviously it will need to know where it will be the same problem same situations everywhere every day in your life so uh, does that necessarily mean being in a comfort zone is really risky or can we also progress in a comfort zone you know we have a saying that says a uh, practice may, makes a man perfect so when we practice the same day the patterns help in this way also that you practice the same thing every day it makes you perfect there is a saying so uh, what do you say about this thing that comfort zone really makes people lazy or can it make people like sharpen sharpening the saw also see uh, i will put at i will put this in this way uh, when you do things over and over again you get better at that because mm -hmm. your brain understands like when we start something new we think it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. but when we start actually doing it our brain understands okay this is the way to do it and when we keep on doing it over and over again our brain understands okay now i have learned this thing now this is the time where your consciousness will go to sleep mm -hmm. so you have already perfected one thing and then now your brain would like to go to sleep mode that is the time you need to pull yourself out of there but if you don't do that that is where you will enter into the comfort mm -hmm. zone so the act of repeating is good until you have reached to a point you can call this i'm very good at this oh, okay. but once you are already good at that 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 means there is nothing to move further mm -hmm. that is the time you need to pull yourself out of that that is the time that is the most risky mm -hmm. period i would say that you have already perfected maybe a skill maybe mm -hmm. an art or maybe any any kind of thing in any uh, walks of your life could be a profession could be a personal life once you enter into that like you enter you reach to that level that there is nothing more to learn mm -hmm. and you want to stay there you want to continue doing it uh, you want to repeat doing it so you will enter into comfort zone your consciousness will go into sleep mm -hmm. and uh, that is where you will not be uh, challenging yourself so, every day yeah. so we'll not be uh, letting anything new come inside our brain no. basically no it won't so uh, as the book itself says it's the habits of highly effective people 
all seven must be very important ones, right? Yes. So if you were to pick up just one habit that this must, uh, this is something that everyone must do, even if they live all six apart. Is there? See, it's like what they have done is that they have created a, a framework. But the most important habit is the seventh habit. Sharpen the saw. Because even the author uh, says, and I have also experienced this in my life, if we don't renew ourselves each day, then none of the six habits are going to happen. So they are very interconnected. Mm -hmm. We can't say that I can live without these two habits or just work on five or I can mm -hmm. just work on two uh, like and leave the other five. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't work like that. You have to focus on it on a daily basis. You have to make sure that you sharpen your saw every day. And I, I'm, I will also say that because I've been following it for a long period of mm -hmm. time. There may be times that you will not be able to follow all seven. Mm -hmm. There may be a time may that maybe you, you might experience some downfalls as well. You might experience maybe you fall sick or something. Anything can happen in life, right? Mm -hmm. But once you have that purpose pulling you, then you will remember that, oh, I have left this thing. I need to get back it. So I would say that there is not uh, even a single habit which you should mm -hmm. avoid, or which you can choose to avoid. Because then if they are not working in harmonious way, mm -hmm. it won't give you the results you so desire. So, um, as uh, we say that everything has its pros and cons and nothing in this world is just uh, perfect in a sense. So, do you find any uh, cons from this book? I think the only cons uh, I would say is that you get so much better that you lose a lot of people. Okay. Because uh, it is human nature that when somebody is progressing at a very high pace, mm -hmm. some people will definitely fall behind and then you will not be able to catch up with them because you won't be looking to catch up with them. And in that case that you might lose a lot of people in your life, uh, but uh, you have to truly understand that if you cannot work on yourself, if you cannot think about yourself, you cannot think about the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it is going to be there. You will be losing people. That is the only con I have seen in my life. All right, so <laughs> that was a very unique kind of con I've ever heard, you know, from anyone. Okay, so uh, there are many readers uh, who read this books, you know, because there is a trend of reading this international bestsellers just because uh, one person is reading the other wants to read just because it's a trend. So, uh, and people fail to complete reading books. Uh, have you faced this kind of problems while reading any book? I think uh, personally I have not faced this situation that I have not completed uh, reading but yes uh, sometimes I do stop in between because you get busy with life certain things like uh, can overwhelm you at certain times so what I do is that I just pause for a while that it could be a day's pause it could be a month's pause it could be a week's pause but I keep myself focused that I have started a task and I need to finish that. Uh, one thing people need to understand is that life cannot be same every time. So there will be different situations. There will be situations that you can never plan for. Like for example, let us say somebody falls sick in your family and then you have to take care of them. These are certain circumstances that you can never plan about. So in this case, let us say if you leave your reading habit and if you leave it forever or if you choose to leave that book and go to another book, obviously mm -hmm. the book is uh, that the book, uh, the book that you have left it's it's not going to like come back in your life and tell that okay read me now <laughs> you have to you have to remember that okay i started a task i need to finish that first before starting another one so i keep myself disciplined in this way that even if i lose track in between i would go back to the same book complete it and then only start the new book and mm -hmm. one thing i would like to give advice to everyone is that uh, most people say that a lot of ceos are reading 50 books in a year 20 books in a year 100 books in a year people like elon musk used to read two books in a day Everybody has their own pace of reading. I found myself that uh, if I read more than 15 to 20 pages a day, it, it gives me so much of information that I'm not able to digest that. So you have your own pace. If you think you can digest 50 pages a day, please go ahead. If you think you can digest like a book a day, please do that. I have seen people completing a book a day, but like never implementing things. What is the use of reading something, getting new information and you're not implementing in your life? I personally think I can read, I would rather choose to read less but implement each and everything into my life than to read more and implement nothing or like, let's say that uh, I read 10 books and I apply only 10%. So that's one book, right? But if I slowly read two books and I apply everything, so my end result is double of that, right? Definitely. So it's all about understanding your capacity, uh, understanding that what is your level of learning because see, everybody uh, cannot be same. 
we just need to understand where we are without any kind of competition and then uh, if you feel comfortable doing something then please do that continue it and don't think that somebody else is reading like 50 pages somebody else is reading like a book a day don't don't get overwhelmed with that and this is where people do mistake because they think that the somebody became a billionaire by reading a book a day or two books in a day i can also do that i am really sorry to say that that even if you achieve that level of greatness you may not be able to match that person so everybody has different abilities is just that we need to make the most out of our abilities not look at other people's abilities so basically reading is not so important but implementation of what you have learned yes yes important. it's 100% if you don't implement what you read it's going to have no change in your life except like uh, a certain things will be there in your mind mm-hmm. you may look at situations in a different way but if you don't act on them in a different way the results are going to be the same so basically there is uh, no such uh, right way hard and fast rules of reading any book no i would say said. no i for me i find that slow and steady reading gives a good results like i myself completed 10 books in a year mm-hmm. and i tried implementing everything that has given me a lot of results mm-hmm. if i had to compare myself to somebody who's reading 50 or 100 book a year i wouldn't be able to do that because my mind doesn't work in that way my mind needs slow information because i like to implement things i am a kind of person i am a kind of reader who who would read something to really truly understand truly absorb it in my mind and then really look f- for ways to apply that rather than just like getting the information loading your mind with information and then uh, not able to handle that information why would you do that um, this is where most people fail i would say so uh, not because just elon musk has finished two books uh, that means we all can so we all have our individual differences and um, so suggestions i would like to ask at the end before we stop uh, the conversation uh, what would you suggest to uh, beginners who are starting to read who are willing to uh, actually implement the uh, knowledge of books in their life but they have just started reading because a lot of people are in this phase i think uh... you should not be thinking of reading too many books you should not be thinking of reading like let's say that you start with just one page and if you can read that one page to explain to somebody that would motivate you to read it properly because you know it's a human nature that when we do things for ourselves we take ourselves granted but when we have to do things for others our mind automatically gives us a different kind of signal mm-hmm. so if in the beginning you are reading to teach somebody or you are reading it to like give the information to somebody else you would be able to actually better grasp that knowledge and information rather than just like uh, thinking of reading whatever number of pages a day and then obviously after 4 or 5 days when you don't see any impact in your life i mean lack of patience is a very big problem that the generations are facing our generation is facing these days uh, so go slow start slow Mm-hmm. start with a page a day start with i would say like to teach somebody else mm-hmm. to give the information to someone else and i think that it would motivate you more and then once you really see the impact of that thing in your life then you would start enjoying it and then you would be like oh i can actually do more and even our mind works in a different way you know uh, when we start a task it's always difficult it's always heavy but when we start doing it when we continue doing it our brain accepts mm-hmm. it as easy okay. our brain reaches to a stage called cognitive ease yeah. and our brain is able to actually process that information better mm-hmm. and then the results start flowing so it's just that you have to understand that it is a phase the beginning is always going to be difficult we say that the first step is always the most difficult step so we need to understand we need to accept this that this is going to be difficult so i'll rather start slow i'll rather like put form uh, form steps and then only move ahead and i would i think that in that case you will be able to reach far mm-hmm. don't try to run very fast mm-hmm. in the beginning start slow catch mm-hmm. the pace catch the momentum and then go with the flow and about the choices uh, of book uh, because there are many genre of book and uh, i mostly prefer self help books because i find it productive of all other genres Uh, have you read like uh, i now i can see that you are also a self help learner uh, the kind of genre you prefer but there are other people who like this uh, science and fictions and other maybe love stories kind of genre so what opinions do you have about those books can we get the 
life lessons from those genres as well or not see i myself have not explored uh, the romance and then fiction wala books because i personally believe in reality so i like to read more of uh, real life experiences mm-hmm. i like to read more of uh, uh, self help genre books and i re- i i really like to uh, listen from the people who have succeeded into their lives uh, i i think if you read fiction because it is just based on imagination it could help it could be helpful to you it may not be helpful to you i can't really say uh, uh, like 100% about that but one thing i can say is that uh, it's not that you you don't have to read that you cannot read that you can do that but you should always mix it you should not be just going into fiction only you should uh, understand the facts also you should understand the reality also mm-hmm. and then only think of going into like other uh, areas other uh, like sections mm-hmm. of the reading of the book since you have already been through the book like it's once or more than once uh, you have read this book i think i have read it 3 to 4 times mm-hmm. uh, because i really like to teach this book to others as well mm-hmm. there was a time uh, i was working in a company and then when i got connected to this book when when this book really shifted the way i think mm-hmm. so i introduced this book to all of my colleagues and we actually uh, you wouldn't believe that uh, we stopped the company for a month okay. and everybody was reading this book all right and uh, that was the time i i went through this book a couple of more times and after that i didn't really read this but uh, this is something that i consider as a bible of my life i i really follow this uh, on a daily basis and it has uh, made huge uh, impacts into my life so have you changed uh, have you like found any changes in the learning or way of understanding when you learned it the second and the third time or was it the same yes uh, like uh, reading book twice or thrice is like every time it's a new experience yeah because when you are reading it for the first time uh, you are able to understand a few points but it's not necessary that you will get the 100% essence out of it but when you read it for the second time you actually feel that oh i didn't read it for the first time how come i missed this part and when it's the third time it's like getting better it's like you know when you're painting on the wall you're putting first coat second coat mm-hmm. third coat the more number of coats you put the better it looks yeah. that's the same with reading books as well if you can repeat the same book it's like i would say it's better to read one great book 100 times mm-hmm. than to read 100 books one time just for the purpose of reading it lovely so as you have already mentioned that it has have uh, it has had great impacts in your life so can you please share some so the biggest impact that it had on me uh, was that i started thinking in a different way i understood one simple thing that whatever i was doing till now it was according to what everybody else has told me it was not exactly according to me i did not used to think according to myself i always used to think what i had learned in my past so that was the biggest change happened that i started to think in a completely different way and when i started applying these habits in my life uh, obviously i kept on progressing i kept on progressing uh, this uh, i i decided to dedicate uh, my life's journey uh, i opened this the book wishes club to to promote the culture of reading amongst youth because you know i like i realized this at the age of 34 i still have a long way to go but if the youths who are starting to go into their life they are venturing into uh, their real lives if they can start reading this from day 1 or like let's say uh, you you leave the college and you are doing certain kind of job or maybe a business but you continue reading it doesn't matter you are reading one page a day or 10 pages a day but it is going to have like uh, 10 years later you are going to have different results i can 100% like personally guarantee you that so uh, the kind of impact that this book has like uh, my personal life has changed the relationship with my own family the relationship with my relatives the relationship with my friends the relationship with my colleagues how i deal with situations everything has changed the whole perspective about things have changed i used to be a very aggressive person towards people but then i started understanding that if a person is not able to do a certain thing that means the person uh maybe the way he is looking at the situation is mm-hmm. the problem itself yeah. so instead of like criticizing that person i started helping that person so that has really worked magic for me uh, everything has changed since i started applying this in my life so it kind of brought more empathy into you oh yes right? uh, like i became more empathetic i i became a better listener i i became a better community person mm-hmm. i became a better professional as well i i i think that Uh, you know uh, i want to tell this uh, thing that it's not just about like uh, how can impact you how this book can impact you personally 
professionally also you know everybody says that i want to become a leader i want to become a leader i think the true leader inside you can come out once you really start applying this thing leadership is not about just having the authority it's also about like making sure that everybody around you is able to understand their responsibilities you are guiding them you are nurturing them and these are the things you develop when you follow these habits so i would say that you can become a great leader even uh, i would like to refer it to another book uh, like there's a book uh, good to great it's a business book it's written by jim collins mm-hmm. and he himself has written in the foreword of this book that anybody who can follow these seven habits in their lives can become a level 5 leader level 5 leader is considered to be the highest level of leadership in which you are able to achieve amazing results being hu- uh, like humble all the time mm-hmm. and like being present all the time so this book can impact your personal professional all aspects of your life your relationships are going to be better you personally are going to feel better you're going to have a better health you're going to have better focus in your life every single aspect of your life is going to be impacted once you follow this thing i can i can totally vouch on this statement and i would totally i would like 100% recommend this to all the people watching this podcast that please read this book apply it in your life if there has to be only one book that you would like to apply in your life please let it be this one it's amazing wow this is just <laughs> so enthusiastic to hear and i am really really looking forward to look um, into this book and your realizations your experiences of reading this has really uh, made me want to read this book not once more than once i would definitely uh, like recommend you to do that and then as soon as possible but please if you're reading any book uh, don't leave that i'll definitely finish that yeah, first yeah please finish and, uh, that and then only go to that because that's also a mm-hmm. habit right this is also a habit yes. that we need to develop it's a consistency we need to develop the habit of consistency as well it's very important yes so uh, i noticed that you uh, just used a word culture of reading just yeah. just some time ago right so culture uh, like we generally understand it as a way of life yes. so when reading comes into a culture that makes is that makes it more meaningful as you yeah. said so how do you uh, want to share the youths or any age group people to uh, indulge the reading into their culture because we don't have it currently in our culture reading basically uh, the students age group they take it as burden because they have been you know prone to uh, reading academic courses only so apart from that reading this kind of book will uh, make them think it's adding more burden to them so how would you uh, clarify that you know the the books in the school curriculum they are designed for a specific purpose uh, because obviously the economy needs to run so the books have been designed the curriculum books have been designed in a way that uh, it makes you perfect to do a certain type of job to learn certain type of technical skills and when we are in school college we are not only focusing on one subject we have a certain set of subjects let's say we have five subjects 10 subjects or like two subjects whatever it is whatever number it is and as you progress like uh, every year the subjects uh, i mean the the level of the difficulty changes it obviously challenges uh, you and improves your cognitive abilities but there is a huge difference between the education we get at schools and the education we get from these books these books are real life experiences of great people so this is going to give you insights into the reality of life academic books are good for maybe getting a job doing some certain type of business but those books cannot really uh, like make that level of impact in your life like mm-hmm. you you really like feel at a different level so the suggestion that i would like to give to the youth is that please do not consider this as a continuation of your academic studies this is a whole new course Mm-hmm. this is something that uh, you should uh, do it as a duty to yourself mm-hmm. because you know uh, what i have noticed is that uh, obviously till the time we are in college we want to get rid of the education we want to get rid of the books we want to uh, approach like okay i got a job i started a business and i'm going to be rich and i'm going to be successful but what happens is that whatever you have learned till that particular age when you stopped learning then uh, obviously your brain has been programmed in certain way mm-hmm. and then those things are going to come back in your life as like patterns what happens usually is that uh, there is a there is a term called mid age crisis yeah. i think that term is basically the situations that you face when your knowledge bank has finished 
so whatever you have learned in the past 20 25 years through your school and college when that knowledge like you like you cannot do anything further than that that's that stage i call it a middle age uh, crisis so if a youth does not want to enter into that stage they must do this as a duty to themselves because our life is not just about uh, just making a little bit of money mm-hmm. or just by uh, gaining some material possessions it's about really making the most out of your abilities and you can only make the most out of your abilities when you keep on sharpening when you keep on learning new things because when you learn new things your brain starts working in a different way when your brain works in a different way automatically your results are different mm-hmm. so this is not something to be considered as a burden this is something to be considered as it's going to change your life it's going to change your results it's going to motivate you it's going to make you a better human being it's going to make make you a better uh, spouse it's going to make you a better parent it's going to make you a better community citizen and it's going to it's going to like have so much of impact on your life that you will actually think of changing the world rather than just thinking of changing your day to day life that's all I am really of the conviction that all the audience are willing to read and willing to uh, make this the only book if they read in their life. So, uh, would you like to share anything to the audience? Uh, something that I might have missed to ask, or something that we missed to discuss early about the book or reading habits. Uh, I think there is one thing that. Uh... is very uh, popular also but uh, it's like when we put efforts results will be there otherwise your results are going to tell you how much effort you are putting and you cannot decide what you are going to become after 10 years you can only decide what you are going to do now mm-hmm. although you can have a vision in your mind but it the results will only depend on what you do on a daily basis so habits are the foundation of success if you cannot form good personal habits good mental habits good financial habits then you will not be able to uh, change anything in your life so habits are something that everybody must adapt everybody must learn everybody must implement it's very difficult to form habits it's not easy uh, there is a saying that if you do something for a period of 21 days it becomes a habit yes it does become a habit but it can break down very easily as well because at the end like as i told you before also that our conscious mind will go back to sleep it would love to go back to sleep so we need to keep on kicking it every single day to like with renewed energy with renewed enthusiasm and uh, you need to work on your habits you need to make it a habit of m- continuing with your habits every single day then only you will be having significant changes and impact in your life so if there was only one thing that i could take from this uh, podcast that would definitely be what you just said make the habit of continuing your habits so would you like to say something to our audience at the end yes i would definitely like to say that uh, please work on your habits habits are the foundation of success if you are not getting any results in your life then most likely it will be traced down to your habits only so let us say if you are physically not well that means you have not adopted the right physical habits so please work on your habits make it a habit to work on your habits on a daily basis do not let your conscious mind sleep and then uh, have patience uh, good things great things take time and then just keep on working over it because results will be seen you may not uh, feel much changes in the initial days but over a period of time if you compare yourself to who you were a year back or like two years back there is going to be huge impact so that's a suggestion from my side i would really suggest please work on yourself please work on your habits and make it a habit of improving your, yourself every single day and really uh, i appreciate you like i i appreciate for having me here it was wonderful to talk to you i i feel like like another person was trying to come out of me <laughs> throughout the conversation i really feel energetic i really feel like reenergized i i started reliving the moments when i uh, got connected to the book it was just amazing thank you so much for having me thank you to you too sir and we are very grateful to have you here and the vibes really did uh, connect to me so That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'm very excited to read this masterpiece by Stephen R. Covey and I hope you all are going to try reading this and also uh, comment your favorite books in the comment section below. It's me Saliska Sharma signing off from today. Thank you all. <laughs>